Hey guys, Jim Nix from nomadicpursuits.com. Hope you're doing well today. Uh, I've got a video, I'm gonna talk about workspaces. Uh, I think workspaces are a really cool innovation in Luminar by MacFun, and uh, I have to admit though that I haven't used them a lot, and, and I wasn't really sure why. It's a great idea. I mean, you know, you can build a workspace for to contain all the filters you might use in a landscape or a cityscape or a portrait, um, and I finally figured out why I haven't used them a lot, and that's because um, not only do I use a lot of the same filters on any kind of photo, whether it's a landscape, a portrait, a cityscape, a seascape, whatever, um, which would mean I, I don't necessarily need multiple uh, workspaces if I'm using similar filters each time, but the, the bigger reason really is that I don't really edit, that fo uh, edit photos in, the, in that way. So I don't really like to say, okay, well, I got a landscape, so I got to use these, or I've got a cityscape, I need to use these. Um, Instead, I, I, was, uh, I was sort of an experimenting and playing with the idea of uh, creating workspaces based on the function, not on the type of the photo. So I don't care if it's a landscape or a cityscape or a portrait, I'm often using the same filters each time to accomplish certain things. And I also found that, uh, and those things are functions, um, I also found that I'm, I'm working on specific functions in order. So let me clarify. Uh, the first thing I usually do when I look at an image like this one from uh, Dublin, Ireland is uh, I kind of want to balance out the light. I want a sort of well-balanced distribution of light across the photo. So I'm generally sort of fixing the light in the frame first. Uh, the second thing is then I'd probably want to bring up some of the details, maybe a little bit of contrast, maybe a little bit of structure, clarity, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and that's sort of my second step. And then the third step, of course, is color. Uh, I love color. I think that's fairly obvious if you look at my photos. Um, and so I'll come in and then do some color work. Now, I still use presets, and I love presets, and a lot of presets that I've built um, actually accomplish a lot of those things in one fell swoop, if you will. But when I'm trying to build a photo from the ground up, not using a preset, I find that I'm starting with the light, and then I'm working on the detail, then I'm working on the color. And that's why I figured out, that's why I wasn't using workspaces a lot, because they don't really do that. They just say, you know, here's 8 or 10 or 15 filters, whatever you put in it and then go use those on that photo. And there's nothing wrong with that approach. That's how most people would do it. And it makes perfect sense. Uh, maybe I'm weird or just different, but I found that I wasn't using them in that way and I prefer to do it based on function. And that also means I stack workspaces. So, you know, we've talked before about stacking filters, which of course everybody does. I've also talked about stacking presets, you know, preset uh, on the first layer, a different preset on the next layer, that sort of thing. And you can get some interesting and cool effects that way. But I haven't really been talking about stacking workspaces, and that's what I'm going to do now. So this is about this video is basically about uh, creating workspaces based on the function, uh, and then stacking them to get to your final result. And by the way, I've got three workspaces that I use for that: light, detail, and color. I'm going to give them away free on the blog. I'll put the link down there below. Uh, let's get started, right? So when I have this photo, I'm going to start with a light control, and I'm glad that I waited. I've been sort of playing with this idea for a while, a few weeks really. But I wasn't quite ready to launch uh, this whole thing, and I wasn't sure why. And now I know why. It's because Accent AI came out, the new filter in the Neptune update. And it's great. So I'm going to start with that, and I included that in Light Control. You can see what it does immediately to a photo. It has a huge impact, which I love. Now, I'm not going to use all of these filters. I don't use them every time. These are ones that I would consider using in uh, making light control adjustments in a photo. Uh, but they won't all be used in this, uh, in this photo. I'm just gonna drag a few of these here to the right, and uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of contrast there, a little bit of smart tone, and I think that looks a lot better. Let me turn off that. Okay, so there and there. You can see I've done a lot of controlling of the light, right? So that's step one, which is your first layer. Um, I'm gonna add a new layer, and I'm gonna go get the detail uh, workspace, so I call that details, and I'm just gonna bump up things like the clarity, which I love. I'm gonna add a little bit of drama, and I'm gonna add a little bit of structure. Now the truth is, I don't want this stuff on the entire photo, I just want it on the, sort of the buildings and the cobblestone streets. So, go get the brush, I'm at 50%, I'm gonna raise that to 70 something, and I'm just gonna brush it in. Uh, oops, uh, make my brush a little bit bigger, and here we go. I'm just gonna go brush that into the spots where I want it to appear. That's how brushes work, you know this already from already using Luminar. But if you don't, that's how it works. You can click on that to check out your mask, see what you missed, and I think that looks good. Let me turn off the mask. Okay, there you go. 
So I think that looks better. So that's my details layer. Let me get back to hand mode. Let me show you the before and the after. A little bit more pop there. I didn't overdo it. That's why I kept the mask at about 72% opacity. Okay, now the third layer or second new layer, third total, uh, is all about color. So I'm gonna use my Color Enhance workspace and I'm gonna play with the colors to bring it up. This was a sunrise in Dublin and uh, the light was beautiful. The sun was coming from down here, but it's kind of flat, uh, it's a little too blue. So I'm gonna warm it up a little bit. I'm gonna start with the mid-tones. I'm gonna give them a little bit of warmth. I'm gonna give the entire photo a little bit of warmth here with color temp. Uh, I'm gonna go to golden hour, bring that up a little bit. So I wanna accentuate some of that color. I actually wanna bring some of the blue back, specifically in the sky. A little saturation and vibrance, because I love those things. And a little split color warmth. And there we go. I think the red's a little too saturated, so I might take that down a tiny bit. Um, and that's good. I've also got split toning in there for color adjustments, but I'm not going to use that on this photo. So there you go. There's the before that color layer, and there's after. Now let me show you where we came on the entire photo, right? So the, the, uh, the beginning, the photo is per, uh, fairly flat, poorly lit, lacking detail, lacking color. And now with these three workspaces and some quick adjustments, I have that. So. I think we've come a long way from that to that. And that's why I like to edit by function. I could create a preset that had these filters in it, but you know, uh, if you use presets, that's great. And if you use mine, I really appreciate that. And I still use them. I love my presets. I use them all the time. But I also find myself at times with different photos. It depends on the photo, but I'm looking at a photo and saying, you know, I wanna do something sort of custom here. What can I do? And that's when I start in. I say, I wanna work on the light and balance it out. Then I wanna add the details, and then I wanna make the colors pop. So that's, uh, that's that. There's only one other thing I might would do, and this is actually uh, some individual filter use. I wanna add a little bit of uh, golden hour, and I wanna add a little bit of soft focus and soft glow. Uh, but I only want it in a, uh, right over here. So I'm gonna bump up some of the golden hour, and I'm gonna bump up a little bit of soft focus and soft glow, and give some warmth to that glow. And then I'm gonna go Paint this in at, let's say, 50% opacity. I'm gonna paint that in right over here and right around in this area. So I'm just trying to give a little bit of glow to where the sun is coming in because it was sunrise over there. And now that I've painted that, I'm gonna bump it up a little bit more and see if I can get kind of the look I'm looking for. I'm actually gonna brighten it a little bit too. I'm just trying to create the look of the sun sort of beaming down the alley there. And I think that does it. Let me look at the before, yep, and the after. I think it definitely looks um, the way I want it to look. So that's just that one little extra trick that I threw in, but the point of the video is uh, consider uh, adopting these workspaces. They're for free. I'll put them, uh, a link to the blog right down here. You can go download these workspaces if you want to use them. And if you don't, that's cool. Workspaces are just collections of filters. There's no edits or adjustments made to the filters. They're purely all zeroed out but it's three different workspaces. It's, it's about light control, it's about details, and it's about color enhancement. And that's the method by which I've been using workspaces. It works really well for me. Uh, so this photo is basically done. I actually would probably come in, uh, there's a little bit of noise here in the sky. I'd, I would add a layer of noise reduction, take that out, and I see a spot. I'd remove that before I actually called it complete. But that's the gist of the photo. The point was talking about the three workspaces, stacking workspaces, and adjusting them uh, sort of with purpose based on function, not type of photo. I hope it helps. It's a new approach. It's something a little bit different. Maybe you'll like it. Maybe you won't. That's okay either way. But uh, give it a shot. Download the workspaces on the blog. Again, I'll put the link down below in the comments. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time, my friends, and adios.